This is a 2009 Chevrolet HHR panel van that was a no crank, no start situation when I was called out to it. I apologize about the audio for this video. I recorded this and for some reason, whatever it is, I cannot get the audio to be synced up properly or have sound on YouTube. All kinds of codec issues and I just gave up and I'm doing it the archaic old fashioned way. Uh, but anyhow, back to this was ended up being a CAN problem, a controller area network problem. Uh, causing no communication with a PCM, TCM, or EBCM. That's a powertrain control module, trans controller, and the electronic brake control module. Um, anytime I have any type of no start issue or communication problems, always check all your fuses. Um, also, uh, I always check pin 16 for battery positive and also pins 4 and 5 for good grounds. Um, I'm going to kind of play the video and try and narrate through and skip through it as we go here. I don't want to waste too much time, but anyways, uh, one of the things that, uh, this is how the vehicle came, it was uh, basically a, a lot of stuff taken apart, you could tell it was in a flood or something happened to it, it was underwater or muddy or something, um, but diagnosing a controller area network vehicle, um, pin 6 and 14 are your CAN bus lines, as you see right here, I am actually probed into those. With the key on, engine off on these v on these lines with a voltmeter, a digital voltmeter, not an analog voltmeter, you should see that have 2.5 volts to ground. So that's from pin 6 to ground, should be 2.5 volts, and pins uh, 14 to ground should be 2.5 volts. Um, not the way I have this connected here. If you have your 2.5 volts and that's good, the next step is to disconnect the vehicle battery and uh, wait about 30 seconds, then you can hook up an ohm meter. Uh, to your connector. I'm just going in to the back side of these I'm using piercing probes because I do not like the front probe uh, connectors because you can cause problems. Just so you know, here's pins 4 and 5. Those should be your grounds. Pin 16 is your uh, battery positive, hot all the time. And over here is uh, pin 6 and pins 14. Those are your uh, CAN communication lines. Um, so with the vehicle battery disconnected and pierce probing or front probing, however you want to do with your voltmeter, using the ohm, section, ohm selection, ohming out the can line should show you to have 60 ohms. On this particular vehicle, I had 120 ohms. Um, there's two terminating resistors in a controller area network bus. I'll show you this uh, picture here. Um, might be easier for me to show you. On the paper here, I've got turn on the light. Hold on. Um, there's two terminating resistors in the uh, uh, data bus. One is in the powertrain control module. It's 120 ohms, and the other one is in the electronic power steering control module. Here's pins six and 14. Very difficult to see. I'm sorry about the way it is, uh, but. When we ohmed that out, we were only seeing 120 ohms, which indicated we were just going right through this resistor. We weren't seeing through the rest of the circuit. I highlighted all the options on this vehicle because the, if you don't, it can get confusing. You don't necessarily have to. But uh, these lines go through the DLC, through the power steering control module, um, down this way, over, up through the vehicle communication interface module, out of there through the electronic brake control module, up into the transmission control module, and over into the powertrain control module which has the other 120 ohm resistor. You should read, like I said, 60 ohms between pin 6 and pin 14 with the battery disconnected. If you read 120 ohms, that means there's an open circuit and you're only reading one. So at this point I knew that I had a problem either with an open resi resistor within the power steering control module um, or an open circuit somewhere else in the system. So the next plan of attack I did was to start uh, trying to separate the system. The easiest module I could get to on this vehicle was the power steering control module. I disconnected that and tested between these two wires at, on that side of the connector and I, I had an open circuit. So then the next easiest module to get to was, I, uh, I think I tested next, the transmission control module. With this module disconnected going between these two pins, I should be able to read back through this 120 ohm resistor, but I had an open circuit. 
if I read on this side of the connector, I had 120 ohms. So I knew that the wiring from here to there was good. So we now had a problem between uh, the uh, transmission controller and this section of wiring over here. Uh, next easiest thing to do is get to the brake, electronic brake control module. Disconnect that and we had then I could read backwards with this all plugged in to 120 ohms of the PCM resistor but we still had an open circuit over here. Um, the electronic brake control module is a little bit difficult to get to so the next thing I did was disconnect the body control module as these people already had it all disconnected. I checked from here to there and we had an open circuit uh, with everything else disconnected. So now we knew the problem was between this section um, and up, up to there. So now I disconnected the electronic brake control module, tested the transmission controller and PCM side, it was good, and we had nothing to the vehicle communication interface module. Um, as we go on here, um, fast forward a bit, try and get to where I want to be here. Uh, well, like I said, I apologize about the double video. This is looking down at the electronic brake control module and showing it on a schematic, of course. But the end result was we ended up working our way back uh, to the uh, vehicle communication interface module, which was way back in the back of the car, all the way in the back. <clears throat> As I dug this thing out, it became very apparent that this vehicle was underwater. Um, you can see the water line on, on the vehicle. You can tell this was underwater. This module is actually upside down right now. It mounts in the car the other way. But what I did at this point was I disconnected uh, the connector at the vehicle communication interface module. Uh, that's the connector right there, uh, which is actually, that is actually this connector right here. With that disconnected, I could ohm out this side and get 120 ohms, and I could ohm out these two wires and get 120 ohms. Um, at that point, I knew for sh pretty sure I had a bad vehicle communication interface module, so I, using back probes as you see here, I uh, went ahead and uh, tied the two circuits together, basically bypassing the vehicle communication interface module. At that point, once it bypassed, the vehicle started up and ran without any problems. I could communicate with all the modules that we couldn't communicate with before, and it, it was uh, good to go. Also, when I got that out and I saw all that water back there, I was pretty sure that was a problem. Plug in the VCI, VCIM, and it does not start. Unplug it and jumper it, and you have communication. The vehicle starts and runs. Um, unfortunately, uh, the last thing you check is always what is the problem and it just takes a while to get there sometimes i probably had an hour or so into this vehicle to get to this point uh, longer than i like to have i should have been able to get it faster but 